Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. Today is Thursday, so we're going to be talking about Bravo, and I've got Meredith here. She's normally my weekend girl, but uh, she said, put me in, coach, and I said, fine. I'm ready to play. Yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, Vanderpump Rules and The Valley. I believe Vanderpump Rules were on episode 11. The Valley, we're on episode 4. And uh, I'm loving the Valley. I got to tell oh you. Oh, my gosh. I had such low expectations for this show. But you know what? Seeing a bunch of people in their 30s and 40s struggling to pay a mortgage, just relationships crumbling because of young children. God, relatable television. It is. It totally is. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I don't care if people are like, we don't want to see the kids on TV and stuff. I'm like, I do. I know that I I get that that's hard, but also like this is a decision their parents made. And I have to say, while while they're focused on the children, it's definitely not the the drumbeat of the show. Yeah, right. Totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just more like, who are the bad parents here? Yeah. And how did they find someone worse than Jax and convinced him to go on TV? Because narcissists are never wrong, Mm -mm -mm. you know? Um, so, all right, why don't we, oh, I was just going to tell you what was happening at my house while I was running a few minutes late. So did you guys have, I mean, because it's not been that many years since you yourself were in high school. For me, it's been a (laughs) hundred, but. Mary Payne. What did you guys have when you were in high school, senior assassins? Did you do this? No, but I know the concept. Okay. So I didn't even know the concept. So last year we were at, um, our neighbor friends, my friend, Mary, her daughter's grad party. And it was all about like the guys coming, that's going to assassinate her. And we got to hide. And I was like, this sounds dark. What are we, what are we doing? But what it is, is you sign up, you pay $20. It goes into the pool and then that, you know, goes towards senior activities or whatever, if you want to be a senior assassin. So you have to shoot somebody with a water gun. They tell you your person, but if you shoot and get somebody else out or somebody else gets you out and then you take on their person, it's like a whole thing. And then it resets at the beginning of the week. So even if you got your person out, they'll just give you another person. It's just sort of like, I I don't really quite know how it works. However, so John has not gotten out and his person has, he has not gotten his person out, but they all have to have their location on, on their phones. So they know where that person is at all times. Is Sheena in charge of this? (laughs) Great, great. Um, It's like on Snapchat, they have to have their Snap Mat on, Map. So they, but the the gist of it is, is you're not supposed to know who has you. But of course, everybody squeals, right? So John knows who has him. And that dude has been hanging out three doors down at his buddy's grandma's house. So every time John does anything, he is like... Special ops, terrified to leave the house, right? So today they don't have school because it's the end of Ramadan or something. I don't know. But they don't have school today. It's a religious holiday. And when I tell you he, just then I had to take the dogs out before I came up here to record. And he parked in the front, which he normally parks in the back. And as I pull up there, and I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bait this guy out. I'm trying to get him to come and get me because he has like double water guns in his pockets ready to go. When I tell you this has been like the thrill of the last few days. So then he tells me yesterday, day before, if on Tuesdays and Thursdays you're wearing water goggles or a life vest, they can't kill you. Oh, okay. That's why children are walking around in my area with floaties on their arms. Like I think- Or floaties. Okay. Now I've been wondering what that was. I said, is this a fashion statement? Yeah. I mean, that also would make sense. No, it is- Part of it, you can't get out if you're wearing any kind of like life water protection. Okay. So he's got um, these Amazon ten dollar goggles that I got him that are all like mirrored, like Robocop. Yep. Yep. And and last night he was like posting all over his Snapchat and stuff. You know who's gonna get me with these on? Like come again? I was like, don't taunt people. But the funniest story of all the stories. Okay, so his two buddies Tommy and Avery are like his two besties, but. So at first, when they first got the person, nobody told, right? Because you, you know. So then people started telling. So Tommy told Avery he had this kid, and Avery's like, "Oh, that kid's in the neighborhood where my kid is. Let's go together." So they get in the car, and they're, they're about to get in the car to drive over. Tommy turns around, shoots Avery in the face. It was like, "Psych! I had you the whole time. <laughs> Killed <gasps> his best friend." Oh my gosh! 
and you have to do it all in video. It's like traitors. It has been, we were laughing so hard about Tommy getting Avery and the video of it. And then Avery standing there like a big goofy, like, oh, he got me. It is, it has given us so much joy. And why do I care if my child wins this like shooting with a water gun competition? Because you're, you're in it now. You're invested. I'm in it. I, I couldn't live with that kind of stress. I also would like to just make clear that unlike Tori, I am not 24. I graduated from high school 18 years ago. And we had okay. something to raise money. We had flamingos. You flamingoed people's lawns. We're, and that we're was doing that too. Yeah. yeah. You get flocked. You get flocked. You get flocked. Yeah. So flocked. we did do we did do that. No one has flocked us and we have not flocked anyone. Okay. So. Get the flocking, you flocker, your mother flocker. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I did find out though, if you pay for the flocking, which is like 60 bucks or something, that whoever's on that flocking committee puts it up and takes it down. So you don't have to, like if you get, like in our day, if you get toilet paper, then you then you are fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you got to take that shit down. Yeah, you're flocked. You're flocked. So at <laughs> least these. So at least this is better than that. Although we don't, our trees aren't very tall. So if we got, I don't even want to put that in the universe. Yeah, don't do that. Um, I don't think kids do that anymore. I, no, no. Mm. Toilet paper is expensive. Listen, they, they have better ways <laughs> to torture each other. Have you seen the cost of eggs? We can't be throwing eggs at people. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, that is why I was running late. I told you I'd tell you on the podcast. That it's is pretty, totally, it's, that is totally exciting. fair. I honestly needed a couple of minutes anyway to like shove a protein bar down my gullet. So it worked yeah. out well. Yeah, guys, Meredith is going to be on TMZ TV. Yeah, I know. What, what's Whatever up Whatever that? that is. I don't, I don't know. know. That's that exciting. Is. Yeah, it's a TMZ live show. I had to watch so many clips just to be like, what, what am I doing? doing. Right. Um, so yeah, I, it should be online at some point. I talk about Isla Fisher not wearing her rings around London, basically. Okay. All right. Okay. I make it well, cute. Okay. I make it cute. There are tennis sure you, jokes. Like I make it fun. Did they weren't deuce in love. Were you doing those kind of jokes? Oh no, I'm not that good. I'm not oh, that okay, good. Okay, I talked okay. about how they were volleying between like where to like, you know, raise their family because that's been a big thing. And then I said, okay. Isla not wearing her rings. That is game set match for this relationship. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I looked okay. that one up. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who compares their relationship to a tennis match? You guys are on opposing sides versus each other. This is not, this is dark. It's dark. It's dark. The whole thing is dark. Mm -hmm. And um, I think all that stuff that's going to come out about him is going to be we're going to find out is the reason she was like, you know, I think I'll go ahead and just cut bait right now. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. That's a fishing reference for those of you who don't <laughs> follow fishing. For sure. Oh, nice. For those who don't follow fishing as if bait is. <laughs> is it cut bait. You cut your bait. It's cut yes. bait. Yes. yes. You get it? Cut your I, line. I know. Okay. All right. Even I get that. All right. We digress. So. Let us talk about, we're going to talk about Vanderpump Rules first. And I told Meredith that we do this a little bit different than we do on the weekend. Because on the weekend over on Hey Bunky, which is Pink Shade Prime, Meredith is covering with me Seeking Sister Wife and the Tell All. And we really break it down uh, by minutia. Uh, but on this, on Bravo Talk, we just sort of overall do it. Because soon we will add in New Jersey and we kind of just have to do our it. bullet points. Keep it so, moving. Yeah, keep it moving. So. I've got a lot of thoughts on Vanderpump. So tell me, uh, you tell me what happened and then I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm still team Ariana and me I will, too. I'm against anybody who's not. Yeah. I think I have like just a couple of main scenes and points and, and people to talk about, but I think yeah. first, like we have to wrap up at Venice beach. Cause we're finishing up this fight that they're having where everyone, first of all, why didn't Vanderpump Rules in editing put at the bottom of the screen that this is like two to three months after, after the reunion? I agree. No one I does agree. it. And it's so telling how superficial these people are where they're like, but you're getting all these brand deals. And it's like, yeah, she's still miserable because her entire life was destroyed. She was with this man for 10 years years and people seem to to not get that but they're like you have a Charmin commercial or whatever it's like no that doesn't really it doesn't make up for the emotional upheaval of my life and so ariana is reading them for filth on the beach and brock chimes in i'm like brock we don't need to hear from you sir okay we don't need to hear from you andy's been saying you know brock is so great he's the voice reason i'm like no no yeah yeah disagree yeah hard disagree and brock's like oh, i think he's been castrated and everyone's like no 
Ariana's no. like, no, he's not. And Brock says, you know, you're going tit for tat. And Ariana goes, I'm allowed to do that. And I'm also not. And this is like part of kind of the problem of the season is obviously they all need to film together at some point. They're all on right. the show. Right. And I think I've seen things floated that perhaps Ariana should have taken off a season or something. But then it's like, why does Ariana have to lose out on money? Because Tom's around. But she right. makes a really good point that Tom is spending a lot of time talking about what a horrible partner she is. And she is over here like you you cheated on me i didn't do anything to deserve this you you did this to me and the cast is just acting like the reunion didn't happen it's three months ago guys it's not one year like and if it what, was one year yeah. you'd be like okay it yeah. has been a year all these things have happened she has she does have this new boyfriend and bought a new house and da 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 all that but we don't know any i mean we know she's got that boyfriend but we don't know any we don't know the chicago stuff yet none of this has happened yet so it is very hard and i do wish they would continue to remind us that it only been 3 months because it feels like the audience is kind of being gaslit because I am very tired of this too because we have known for such a long time but you have to remember when this is airing and to watch lala try to bridge the gap between all of this it's like you were screaming on stage at Tom Sandoval just a couple of months ago. James and Lala were so aggressively going at him, which yeah. I'm not saying right or wrong. And then she's, you know, with Sheena and being like, you know, she should move out of that house. Like, I don't feel any sympathy. And Sheena's like, yeah, I totally agree. And it's like, what are you talking about? That's yeah. half her house. Like, she just cried to you in a bar by the beach about how emotionally hard this has been for her and how the the house wasn't just a house. It was this dream. It was this idea of a future. And it symbolizes so much more. And they take – Sheena and Lala take that conversation and go gossip in the sperm bank. I know. I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that at all. What are you doing? I didn't like that at all. They took that conversation where – Ariana is finally like kind of vulnerable and crying and not just being like, fuck off, you know, not just being like, you know, bitchy or whatever. Now she's actually crying. I mean, explaining like, this was my relationship. This was my life. This is where I saw like possibly having kids, all these things. And we, they, they so painstakingly picked out every piece of furniture in that house. Like there was two seasons where they had no furniture because oh, yeah. they were trying to get it exactly right with this designer. But like they said, with um, Jackson, Brittany and Katie and Tom, they literally bought the furniture that came with the house. That was the show furniture. They were just like, we don't want to have to decorate it. And Tom and Ariana had a whole different thing going on. So yeah, I can understand. I can understand all of those feelings. And I just don't, that really made me mad when Lala and Sheena were talking shit about her at the sperm bank, which I mean, I love how Lala walked into the sperm bank in like a like a little short like conservative Chanel outfit, and then she undoes her jacket, and it's like a sheer mesh boob top underneath. I don't know I was like, what she is doing. She looks both thirty five and fifty five at all times. I don't know <laughs> yes. what is happening here. Yes, and yes. yeah, and and what's really interesting too in that conversation, and I have one more thing about Lala is that she keeps Lala needs therapy. I'm not saying that she can't have a child. Lala needs therapy, though, because she keeps talking about, I want a family. I'm a part of something that's broken. I need a child that's all mine. No one can take this child from me. And it was just- She said that a lot. It, it just kind of- I. I I, I understand what she means, but like, how do you think Ocean's going to feel one day? Maybe that's what I think. That. That's what I think. Like- Ocean's going to hear that and be like, oh, okay, so you give me up half the time, but this new baby you get to keep for the full – I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I just think it's a weird thing to set up. And again, I'm not saying that she can't have children and, and decide how to have children, but it really seems like this is coming from a much deeper place of of being brought up in a in a two-parent household. And, you know, Lala's like, I – you know, and she's crying about it. And I'm like, yeah, no, Rand did you dirty, but also, like, y- you knew who Rand was. Like, why are we yeah. pretending like he didn't give you the Range Rover that when he was like with another mistress, when he was cheating on the mother of his children? I mean, right. I'm sorry. You, you really, you're really shocked. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year we hear that Rand's have having like a fourth daughter with it would, somebody else. Yeah, it yeah. would not be shocking. It really yeah. wouldn't. And then so later when it's so interesting because you start to see Katie and Lala start going at it again. That's something that starts bubbling up, like these these tentative relationships that they formed around Ariana are starting to disintegrate a bit. And Lala is, I just don't, she's delusional. She really is delusional. She doesn't, under, 
she doesn't understand why Katie's upset that she met Joe for wieners in an all black skin tight jumpsuit. So that I mean, whatever the name of piece. whatever was the name of that wiener mobile, my God, we get it. It was like brand, 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 brand deal, brand deal, brand deal, brand deal. They filmed for free. They got free hot dogs. They got hot dogs for like, like we get it. It's a wiener mobile. It was like, kind of slutty. It. it was kind of slutty, like <laughs> with the wiener coming out of the bun. And it's like, you're, well, it, I don't know. It was a little. That is what a know. hot dog well, looks like. It was Meredith. a little fat. No, I will show you the picture. I know what a hot dog looks like. No, I will send you the picture because I was like, oh, uh, it's aggressive. So, <laughs> but then it's so like Katie tells Lala that she's not consistent. And Lala's like, I'm the most consistent person. And Sheena's like, yeah, she's so consistent. Lala is not consistent at no. all. No. At all. She was telling Sheena earlier in the season to get over what happened at the upfronts. Like, or no, she was defending Sheena about not being over what happened at the upfronts in 2012. And Katie was like, it was 11 years ago. Get over it. Yeah, we were mean. And now she's telling, she's telling Katie that she should get over the Joe stuff, even though this is like really fresh, all this Joe stuff and and what Joe might have known about Tom and Raquel. So it's just, if, if Lala's anything, she's inconsistent. Sheena said on Watch What Happens Live last night that 100% Joe knew the whole thing about Tom and Raquel. 100%. Yeah. What did you think about her explanation of that? Like, she was like, I thought they were just broken up. Really? I mean, I, I think that Joe um, maybe doesn't focus too much on what other people are doing. So I could see that part. I think she probably was just very much like, I'm so excited to be with Tom Schwartz. I'm just going to sort of live my own life. I do think the girls are. Um, have been really awful to her, but I also do think she's a weirdo. So it's, it's, I, maybe she and Schwartz are actually just completely perfect for each other. I think they are actually. And maybe Katie just wasn't, you know, uh, quirky enough. You know what I mean? For Tom Schwartz, maybe she was too Debbie Downer, too much to kill Katie. I don't know. But on the one hand, yes, they've all treated her badly. But on the other hand, I've heard, the cast members be like, okay, don't let this poor me, everybody's bullying me thing fool you. She knew what was going on. She was participating in it. And now Ariana is supposed to be like nice to her. Katie's supposed to be nice to her. She knew she was, she was a participant. They did double dates together with Tom and Raquel when Tom was living with Ariana and nobody thought they were broke up. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying that that was right, but I still think she did that because she was so in love with Tom Schwartz that she was, I think she's so in love with Tom Schwartz. That she and I think that it. when he said, Oh, yeah, I had a date with this girl, Tori, the other night. She's like, oh, really? Watch me fuck your life with this crisis hair. Oh, my God. That was amazing. So it was funny because people were like, I saw on Twitter someone saying, I cannot believe Joe. I mean, I, now I know Joe isn't a good hairstylist. And I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, this is like the scene in Runaway Bride with Richard Gere, where he goes into curl up and die, D-Y-E, the best named fake salon ever. Uh-huh. And they recognize him as the reporter. Mm-hmm. And so they tell him, we're just going to do something special. And so they start dyeing his hair rainbow and then reveal it to him. I I, I don't think remember that at all. You don't remember? I, I, watched, I, mean, I watched that movie, but I don't remember There that. are some movies that I just watch so often as a tween teen mm-hmm. <laughs> that it's just, mm-hmm. it's ingrained. And mm-hmm. I, I loved that movie. Yeah, she definitely gives him, he's like, I have a midlife crisis. And she's like, and I'm out for revenge. So let's yeah. dye your hair bleach blonde and everyone in that salon looks horrified. And that's when he tells about the date with Tori. Because just to back up for a second, Katie and Tom, suddenly there's a storyline out of nowhere, 11 episodes into the season, Mm -hmm. that Katie and Tom are fighting for the same girl, and it's Sheena's former 24-year-old nanny, Tori. It's not all of a sudden. It's just, they just met her. They just met her, and Tom asked her out. And then Katie hooked up with her. Like, I mean, to be fair, Tori bullied him into asking her out. Well, and then she kind of, <laughs> listen, I'm not, I, 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 game respects game. Okay. And, but we see that flashback of Tori. I'm sorry. This is so like, I just want to be actor because she's like, just so you know, I think you're hot. And we see that flashback. I'm like, Tori, oh, baby, you're 24. Tom is like 41. What are we doing here? I'd love the whole um, thing with James Kennedy, even though, you know, we know he's an awful person. And personally, I've personally been offended by him. But I think that him just being like, why are we acting like this isn't weird? 
<laughs> He's like, it was Why? so good. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. And Katie, I mean, we do find out, but because when Katie, Katie very smartly, there's a bar scene after the beach where Tom is talking. This is when Tori bullies Tom into asking her out. And then Katie comes over and she's like, that's not champagne. <laughs> just to own him. And then she's like, look over there. Those girls want to talk to you. Why are you being rude and ignoring them? So she kind of uses this other table of girls as a decoy. And Tom's like, oh yeah, oh shucks. I don't want to be, I don't want to be like, I'm ignoring them. And she's like, yes, M- Mrs. I'm going to steal your girl. So then she swoops in and starts talking with Tori. And then suddenly they're kissing. And someone said on Twitter with those nails, I know that those two are not lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> so so many long acrylics but we do find out that katie is more attracted to people and that she hasn't dated a girl but she has had sex with a girl so, so okay here's yeah, what i'm it was, and that's it was probably awesome. Kristen. yeah oh here here's what i'm gonna say we though. back is, in the day Kristen hooked up with everybody oh yeah that's true god yeah. time flies when you're hmm. yeah. anyway so i don't think Tori is long for katie though because when they do eventually have their date the day after tom's date yeah. They're painting, and Tori makes a comment that, <laughs> wait, Bob Ross was alive when there were video cameras, and you can just see Katie's face. And listen, we know that Katie will dump a guy over thinking Penne is a sauce. You think yes. she's not going to end it with this girl for not knowing Bob Ross, who famously made shows with a camera yeah. about yeah, painting? That's how we know to make fun of Bob Ross because of the happy little trees. You can see her lady, Katie's lady boner just absolutely disappears. Yeah. I mean, I think it's funny. It's a funny storyline to be like, no matter at every turn, Tom Schwartz will be "Eh," by Katie his whole life, you know, and her and her by him as well. Uh, He's a terrible husband. We can all agree. But I do think it's a funny storyline that like, yeah. I do like them kind of spiting each other as exes that are not going to get back together. I do like this for them. Yeah. Um, it's funny though, because back to the salon when Tori is doing his hair and he's telling her about, or not Tori, excuse me, when Joe is doing his hair and she's telling him about the date, she just is like more aggressively doing his hair with every swipe of bleach. What's she's he just- thinking? Like, what's he thinking? I mean, they are actively in a friends with benefits relationship and then to be on camera and be like, yeah, I had a date. Didn't it? I mean, he knows that's going to hurt her feelings and because we see that's what happens later, but it's awful. He's the, awful. The common denominator here is that while the women may seem more out front with their awfulness at times, like I understand why Katie is polarizing the common denom- denominator of, of evil is Tom Schwartz. Because yep. he does this good boy, aw shucks, little yeah. old me. But then you find out he is saying things to women that are just crushing them. And it's like, yeah, this is who he is. This is his pattern of behavior. And that's why, yeah. again, I stand on the hill is of hill of Katie Maloney is a dimension multi-dimensional person. I understand yes. why she gets under people's skin. But yeah. I remain a Katie Stan. I do too. I won't. I, I will not back down. I am in a long running fight with someone who's just starting the show about this. Okay, they're just starting the show, then they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. I said more will be revealed. So we also find out though in this midlife crisis hair appointment that he's going to go <laughs> to a he's going to go to a singles event with Tom Sandoval, and Joe's like, "What? Can I come?" Yeah. He's like, "Huh? Yeah. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> Joseph." This podcast is sponsored by Greenlight. When you're a parent, you'll have your fair share of big talks with your kids, and one of those big talks should involve money, and Greenlight can help with that. Greenlight is a debit card and a money app made for families. You can send your kids instant money transfers, get real-time notifications of their spending, manage their chores, and automate allowance. You can set up recurring or one-time chores. In our house, the way we did it, we set them up weekly so they would get paid on the next Sunday for what they had done that week. It was really great because you could see their progress or if they were just totally slacking on a chore, then they could see that they didn't get their $5 that week or whatever it was. And your kids are building financial literacy and independence by learning to earn 
save, and spend wisely. The Greenlight app also comes with an in-app financial literacy game called Level Up. You know, kids love a game on their phone. That helps kids build money confidence through videos, bite-sized challenges, mini games, and more. Millions of parents and kids use Greenlight to learn how to make responsible financial choices. So stop putting off the money talk and start putting your kids on the right path. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free at Greenlight dot com slash pink shade that's greenlight.com slash pink shade to try green light for free greenlight.com slash pink shade if you're listening to this podcast chances are you're a fan of drama but meltdowns tantrums and food fights at your kitchen table that's where i draw the line let little spoon eliminate mealtime drama for you and your family little spoon delivers fresh healthy meals and snacks that your kid is going to love for every eating stage okay guys they have the baby blends these are little blendable things the first time you're feeding the baby the food and they're so cute and oh and they taste it and their little faces are so happy That's when they're starting solids, okay? Then you have the biteables. These are transition to table early finger foods. Then you have the plates. These are the toddler and big kid meals that are free of junk and taste amazing. Even the pickiest eaters will love them. They've got the hidden veggie mac and cheese. They've got the chicken nuggets. And adventurous eaters will like pot stickers, gnocchi, and more. They're smoothies. That's what my little nephew James loved. He loved the smoothies. This is healthy snack time with organic smoothies in the form of convenient pouches. God, I wish they had those pouches when my kids were little. Uh, My nephew liked the strawberry banana shake. Um, They also have these uh, take on an old classic, which are called lunchers. These are build-it-yourself lunches like Easy Cheesy Pizza and Chicken Dunkers. Ah, you guys, they're protein-packed. The best thing is it comes to your door, you pop it in the fridge or the freezer, and then when you get to that witching hour and things are going crazy in your house, you pull it right out, and you've got either a snack or a meal ready to go. comes right to your door, and you love it. So simplify your kiddos' meal time with 30% off your first order. Go to littlespoon.com slash pinkshade and enter our code pinkshade at checkout to get 30% off your first order. That's littlespoon.com slash pinkshade to get 30% off your order. So they go to this LA singles party, which looks like the saddest thing in the world. I never want to do this. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I was like, is it going to be speed dating or is just going to be single and mingle? And then then's what's going to happen. It's going to be the same thing as going to a bar where everybody's just going to talk to the hot girls. And then yep. I'm going to be in the corner with my, this sounds very personal to me, doesn't it? Sounds yeah, it sure sad. does. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. So it's basically red light, green light because you get a little wristband. If it's yeah. green, go. If it's yellow, it's maybe. I don't know me? what yellow was. Yellow is maybe you're you're open. You're open to meeting someone. And then red is I'm the wingman. So red, I think red what yeah, red was no or I'm the wingman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the one thing we see, so Tom brings his you know new group of friends that he's gathered up, and we see Craig, who is labeled as Tom's assistant. So my question is, is Craig the new Anne or does Tom have two assistants? And why does he have two assistants? Craig is the new Anne because That's Anne goes think. for Ariana and now Anne has a podcast called We Signed an NDA. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anne, you go, girl. You yeah. go, girl. Anne um, was just uh, – is if wasn't already on, is going to be on my friend uh, Patrick and Dylan's podcast, Bad TV. Um She's going to be on there. They sent me, they were like, if you were just here one more day, we would have had you come in and do this, you know, this interview with Anne. I was like, oh, so they sent me uh, the information. I was like, do you want to talk to Anne? I was like, sure, I'll talk to Anne. Yeah. Anne seems like a, a funny, good time. I actually know someone who's good friends with Anne. So I'm, I'm trying to, trying to make a contact there. Yeah. Uh, Anne's all over. You know, Anne is like, when we were at Podcast Movement, I was talking to Chris and Wa and Kate Casey and Matt were all sitting there. And they were like, oh, yeah, we know Anne. She's like in um, The Groundlings or UCB or something. And they all know her. So <gasps> I mean, she's totally yes. a comedic actress. Yes. Oh, my God. I yes. love I love the more I learn about Anne. I just yeah. do. It doesn't mm-hmm. – even learning that, I'm like, that just makes it all the better. I can't believe Anne was – oh, my God. What if she was just working for Tom Schwartz, just to uh, – Tom Sandoval, just to like prep for like – you know, just kind of a role or like later, yeah. she's just like, I'm just really going to use this opportunity to really get into a character. Because, you know, Tom Sandoval wasn't paying her a lot, but she was, get, she is also getting paid by Bravo. So, so smart. Um, yeah. and Way to go, I, Anne. I can't tell if it's better or worse that she doesn't get to go to the singles events and is stuck 
cleaning the house, but I feel like cleaning the house is better than this. So now Schwartz is filling them in on Tori and Joe is like, "Mm, (laughs) Joe's weird. (laughs) She's so annoyed. No, Joe says Tori's weird. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, Yeah, Joe says Tori's weird, which is funny because everybody says Joe's weird. I think Joe's a little weird, but I also kind of feel like she's kind of harmless and she's just very in love with a man that is not available for her and she desperately wants it to be different. I think all that too. I think she is weird and she is desperately in love with Tom Schwartz and they may be the most perfect couple ever, but I do think there's a lot there that she is, she's doing a Tom Schwartz. Poor me. I'm so innocent. I didn't know anything. Look at me. I'm just a little baby. That's fair. And she's doing that, but she did know everything that was going on. I kind of wish she would be like, yeah, no, I knew and I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable speaking up and I should have. And I was just really into shorts. I wish she had just been honest, to be honest. Just say it. Yeah. Yeah, because- it's fine. And so, of course, it's not good when Tom Sandoval has a very clear read on something, but he does. He's yeah. like, here's the problem. Tom Schwartz is sending mixed signals mm-hmm. and 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 they're on very different pages of what they are. But what we see in the confessional from Joe is that, according to her, they have said, I love you. They have sex. They yeah. are very emotionally entangled with each other and you can see yes. some of it when they're out together so i he's not sending mixed signals he's leading her full on if this is true yeah. he is leading her full ass on i think that's he is. what and he's I, doing he doesn't know how to make a decision he doesn't know how to say no he doesn't like confrontation so he just does the easy thing which by the way every guy from age 18 to 35 has done this but he's too old now He's, he's too old been for it. Fully, he's been fully married. And he's also, I, I think it's like, I don't know. I've started seeing this kind of behavior as more nefarious and sinister. Because what he's doing, he he is knowingly hurting yeah. and destroying women that he purports to care about. And yes. like, that is gross. That's yes, how you're treating people in your life. But it's like, oh, shucks. So I'm definitely hoping that goes away. And then we have this real hot girl. That is just hitting on Tom Schwartz and he lets her wear his hat and he's, she's like, he's like, I need that back. No, never mind. Joe comes over. She's like, what, what? Yes. She, she has your hat. That's your favorite hat. Like she is so angry at what's going on. He's like, no, I have a whole like, like storage bin a container or whatever. I'm like, you have, how many hats do you have? And yeah, I mean, I think they're Schwartz and Sandy hats. Yeah. Yeah. And at first he was like, that's the only one. Cause he wanted, he didn't know if he was going to like her. And he was like, okay, you can have it. But I think Joe came over to try to be like, look at me. I'm so goofy. You should, you know what I mean? She just does that goofy thing, but she's actually really pissed. She's, she's just like Schwartz. Yeah, she's just she, like Schwartz. She's being goofy, but she also wants to cock block. But this girl, this is the second time someone demands Tom Sandoval or Tom <laughs> Schwartz do something. He's, yeah. He is bossed around by women this episode. And she's like, kiss me. You've never had a kiss like mine before. I mean, she's confident. Yeah. I will give her that. And they, I mean, immediately we go in with tongue, but then he tries to pull away and she has him by the throat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, like, I don't know who this girl is, but she wants to be on this show. And then Joe yeah. comes over like she's she's breaking up a brawl at the saloon in the Wild Wild West and goes, what in tarnation? <laughs> <laughs> what in tarnation? I said, I said where, where did that come from? And then she's like, I'm heading out. And she walks out and that's when she tells us she thought that they were there to support Tom Sandoval. Not that Tom Schwartz was going to be a part of this single ready to mingle because – Behind the scene, they're, in Joe's mind, at least they're together. They say, yeah. they lo- I love you. They sleep together. They have emotional connections with each other. And she feels like she is the secret. And She's then correct. at the end, we get that. Well, we have the paintball thing. The, there's paintball. Mm-hmm. Ugh, it looks Ugh. miserable. It looks like the set of that. Mad Max and like just as hot. It sounds miserable. The, the liability waiver you must have to sign off on. He's I like, did hey, like might break your face. I did like that Ariana was like, of course Sandoval has his own gear because he's such a professional paintballer. I love that. He has an <laughs> outfit for every occasion. He must have a whole entire costume closet. 
And I love that Katie's like, I would rather eat a leather jacket. <laughs> I was like, wow, specific. I was like, that's very, it reminds me of the book, George the Terrible Eater. It's something like that. It's like a goat who won't eat trash, yeah. won't eat human oh. food. It's I, Maybe it's Gregory. Anyway, doesn't matter. Clearly, I have young kids. But during Paintball, Ali, Sheena, and Lala do tell, talk about like what's been going on. Phil, you know, Ali in on everything. Yeah. And they're talking about how, you know, Katie's not loyal because she fucked Max. And I'm like, well, if that's like the one spite, like the one spiteful hookup she's had over a, a, a couple of years. I, okay. I don't know. By the way, Max is best friends with Tom Shore. So why aren't we mad at Max? Oh, you know what? Great point. Excellent point. And here's the thing. They say, or Lala, I think says, Katie is going crazy. And my thought is, is Katie going crazy or does she see the game that Lala is playing with forgiving Sandoval, you know, trying to create a storyline there, bringing in Joe, trying to be the quote unquote peacemaker. And she's calling bullshit after seeing how hard Lala went against Sandoval like 10 or 12 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I think Katie smells bullshit. You mean when, when Lala was like yelling at him on that boat? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that, okay, that just happened. And then yeah. the reunion, it's like, no, you, you flip flop. So I don't, I don't like the whole Katie is crazy thing, but yeah. the final scene of this is the, is the talk in Tom's apartment, maybe Joe's place. There's a lot of stuff of hers. I don't know. If she lives there still. Wasn't she a roommate? She did live there at one point okay. when he first moved out of his house with Katie. Yeah. Yeah. She did. Yeah. So Tom wonders if he's sending Joe mixed signals. N yeah, nobody. Yeah. You're, you're fucking with her, actually. And yeah. he doesn't want to be in a relationship. <laughs> Joe, I like Joe when she kind of loses the like, <laughs> and just gets real. Because she's yeah. like, shut the F up. Yeah, I like she that is, too. She is laying it down and she is really vocal about how she feels in a way that feels really honest and open in a way that you can like kind of root for her, where sometimes I understand with, Katie, people haven't always felt like they can root for her. But, and he's like, oh, I guess, like, I don't know, maybe we have to hang out less. She's like, no, we don't hang out at all. She basically says, I need space. Yeah. And I have feelings for you. And this hurts. She starts to cry. And she just thinks what they have is rare. And I oddly enough agree with her. I think yeah. they have something really rare. Me too. And again, that's that's sort of the push and pull I have with this Joe character is she is an oddball and I don't like her being bullied. But at the same time, I can understand why everybody's mad at her for her role and what she played with the uh, Tom and Raquel thing, knowing about it and then going to Ariana's house for Thanksgiving, knowing she that Tom was fucking Raquel. Do you that's, know what I mean? That's true. I just I just wonder, yeah. though, too. But I felt if, bad for her in this situation because I've, like, I've been like, there. Are we giving the same and oh god I have to, oh god have I yeah. so it it's giving I don't know it's, it's I kind of wonder like are are people holding her to account the way they aren't other people you know what yeah. I mean it, it does feel like she's kind of being held to task more than like Tom Schwartz who you know also kissed, knew about it kissed Raquel and basically used her as a decoy you know so yeah. that they could continue this it's like I, I just feel like there are other people that are a little more responsible not that she doesn't have responsibility but this the show ends with Joe wants to call her dad and she leaves and that just broke my heart I'm not gonna lie sad. it she said, really I want to call my dad that made me sad it made me really sad because like you said, this is so relatable. Who hasn't been with that person that they desperately want to date? Because everything yeah. seems so good and this person, <laughs> wow, Meredith is 20 again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you that I saw something interesting um, and I heard Ben and Ronnie talking about it as well, is that there's the they put the unedited version on Peacock, right? And so oh. we're all used to like when we want to watch – a reunion and then we want to see him really cuss and stuff. We watch it on Peacock because it just hits harder when Joe Gorger's like, fuck you, um, instead of beep. And so people are like, if you're not watching it on Peacock, like you're doing it wrong. And they're also putting bonus scenes into Peacock. <gasps> what? So apparently on this past episode, there was a bonus scene with James and Allie and Lisa Vanderpump and James's fucking crazy mother. Dude, I don't, they shouldn't do that. They that shouldn't do that. Mad. And then also there was this like longer scene of when Sandoval was talking about how messy Ariana is. And he was like, she is so fucking disgusting. She never picked up a goddamn thing in her life. She, she, I don't even know how she fucking wipes her ass. She's so, I mean, like it's 
because when you hear the curse words and you hear him going on and on and on about how gross she is, you think like, this has been three months and you did something terrible. And all you're doing is throwing out, um, you know, red herrons to, is that the right term? Red herrings. Red herrings. Thank you. Yeah. Herons it's kind of like, like, it's kind of yeah. like, look over here. Look over, look over look here. Over look, she's, look, she's messy. She didn't stock the pen drawer. She never bought paper towels. She's going to have a rude awakening if she ever gets her own house. Okay. It's none of your business. I, he Who is, cares? Ugh, it, it really, it really sucks the way, the way that Tom Sandoval is kind of slowly being rehabilitated because everyone is like, well, we got to film a show. So we're just going to, you know, kind of be fake still, about it. And Ariana's like, hang, no. He can still sit with us, you know. Yeah. I mean, every, all that stuff went down in March and then I saw them at BravoCon in November and she was, you know, on the stage across from him, never looked once at him, just at the ground, anywhere else. And on that stage at BravoCon on their panel was, um, Ariana, Lala, James, Allie. On the other side was Lisa Vanderpump. Not needed. We don't need you, Lisa Vanderpump. And then it was, uh, Sandoval, Schwartz, Sheena and Brock. I just, I just think that people online, especially, are mistaking Ariana's anger for mm. for the fact that she doesn't care and she's over it. When she tells us clearly, this is a shield. This is a way to protect herself because she is in so much pain and yeah. doesn't necessarily want to be crying all the time. And also, as we find out, you know, she's crying to Sheena and Lala and really bearing her soul. And then they turn around the next scene and are talking about how they don't feel pity for her because she won't move out of the the house and Sheena thinks that she thinks she's too good to be in an apartment. It's like, do you do you know how real estate works? What are you also, people doing? Ariana and Tom were in that disgusting shitty apartment for a very long time. And they even talked a lot on interview stuff. They're like, we are actually trying to save up for a house that we want, that we can afford, da, 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 da. And then, of course, he ended up taking out some other kind of loan for Schwartz and Sandys. And I'm sure he's trying to untangle himself from that no, as she well. she this yeah. right. Why would you leave the house of the guy that cheated on you, that blew yeah. up your life in a hot market, and just give in with to whatever asking price he's he's like he's offering you. No, yeah. I'm going through. I'm counter off. I'm I'm doing a counter, and I'm making sure that I know exactly what I'm taking. That is I like smart. how I, I did like how she had the designer come over and yes. was like, "Let's go through everything because the designer has the records of who paid for what." So even she could just look at the four last numbers of the credit card and be like, "Okay, that was me. That was Tom. That was me. That was Tom. you know what I mean." That is just smart. That is smart. Yeah. I don't understand why no one's like, Tom should get out of that house. He cheated. Why would he do that? He should leave. He should leave. No one, no one is like, they're like, why isn't Ariana leaving? Are you kidding me? I agree with you. He ruined their marriage. Now he gets to to have the house. These people are, these people are out of their minds. But she has bought a new house. So good for her. You go, go, girl. girl. You go, girl. (laughs) All right. So let us start with The Valley. Um, Season one, episode four. Capri, chaos. Capri, Capri, Capri. I've never heard Capri. Uh, I've only heard it when Dorit was doing the Capri room <gasps> at Buca de Becco. Baby. Baby, I've got to do the Capri room with like lemons at Buca de Becco. It'd be like uh, transported back. So uh, I've got to put my glasses on so I can see. So um, we open with the fighting at the dinner, at the Capri dinner. And we're fighting with this, like, who who called Michelle a racist situation? So Kristen tells Michelle, like, you know that I love you, and you know I don't think that about you, and I've always protected you, which Kristen is no dumb dumb. This comes up again because we're now we're all – the question is now, what are you – huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. she is a se- – Kristen is a seasoned vet. <laughs> you have to be careful with her. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't tell her shit. Nope. Just in case she's on a reality show 10 years from now. So then we get the whole racist things goes round, round, round. We remember, you know, then they're bringing up Kristen with the Faith Sowers thing. And um, Jack tells us about Janet. He goes, watch out for Janice because she stirs shit up and she sits back and watches. He's like, Janet's a lot like me. She's a silent killer. I would die if Jack thought some quality of mine was something that we shared. That would scare me. I also don't know if I buy this argument yet, though. I do think Janet is a silent killer. 
I do. You just you gave a thumbs up on the screen. I did. I did. My thumb is just like this, and it. Yeah, okay. Um, but I do. I think that's right. I think Janet behind the scenes is messy, messy. I don't know. I my, the jury is still out for me. Uh, to okay. use some lawyer speak, because anytime right. her husband just says a sentence that's normal, people are like, "Oh my god, the semantics of a lawyer." <laughs> he's so smart. It's like he's literally just make like a reasonable statement. By the way, Matt used to work with him at the law firm. Uh, yes, really. Matt, know, Matt knows him. Like oh. it was like, yeah, he used to be a lawyer when Matt worked at the law firm. Oh, yeah. I'm texting him right after Isn't this. That crazy. Um, so Kristen is like, look, here's the thing. I just repeated what Zach told me. And so they're all like, ah, rah, rah, rah. so outside Kristen sits down uh, with Zach after they're done eating and cries. and was like, this is ridiculous. Like you totally threw me under the bus. And Zach says, I'm taking responsibility for what I said. And Kristen is taking no responsibility for what she did. And Zach goes, the whole thing is, is that Janet is the instigator of it all. Janet is the one who had a conversation with Michelle and got this vibe that Michelle was a Republican and then somebody made a leap from that to racist. So Janet is the instigator of it all, but they can't say anything to her because she's pregnant. But they also leave out the fact that like, again, I know that some, I, I think, I think this is my theory. Kristen got stuff and, and jumbled it all up and, and it's true. And yeah. I, I do think there's, there's some truth in Zach being like, I didn't say that. And Janet saying, that is not what I said. I, I could see yes, that there being yes. some truth, the telephone game, but a lot of this came out because of, of, it seemed like, you know, Michelle thought that the don't say gay protects children. So that's, uh-huh. it's actually a different argument. It's not yeah. even like a racist argument, which is kind of what gets me. It's like, no, it's really, a, homo- it's really a homophobic argument. It's honestly, it's really, <laughs> I think what Janet said is probably true that, you know, you get online and you can go down these algorithms. And yeah. a lot of times organizations use like s- certain words and stuff to make you feel like, oh no, this is about kids. And of course everyone wants to protect kids, not really understanding it. Yeah. But I just want to point out really quickly that being half Mexican and, and, uh, Persian does not mean that you cannot be a racist. Like people can have internalized racism. I just don't know why they didn't focus on what Janet said was said. You know what I mean? Yeah. It got totally jumbled because Janet and Michelle had a conversation. Janet then says to Jasmine Jasmine and Zach, and then that tells Zach. And then Zach tells Kristen that, uh, Michelle's a racist. I don't, anyway. Which is so weird because it seems like she told, now that we know that Jasmine is in a relationship with a woman, Zach is obviously gay. Yeah. It's like, okay, it kind of makes sense that she would talk to them and just say, hey, you yeah, know, this is, is kind of concerning because this this is hurtful, harmful to you, you know? Yes, yes. And somehow this becomes like, Michelle's a racist and a Republican. <laughs> oh, just, the horror of a Republican. It's just, it's funny that it always ends with, and a Republican. <laughs> I mean, like, guys- by the way, you could certainly be a Republican and not be a homophobic racist. Okay. Just, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's yeah. a requirement of the job. It's just no, it's funny not. that that is like the ending thing that is so dark. It's not the racist. Yeah. The it's funny. It's like it's like they live in D.C. or something, and people care. You know. So they they are going easy on Janet because she's pregnant. So at um, Jackson Brittany's house, so they're waiting on a speech therapist to arrive, Miss Dory. They say that Cruz hit all his milestones as he's supposed to, but he regressed with his talking. So that's why they're doing this speech therapy with Miss Dory. Now, I, I told you this earlier. My son at age two and a half or three started speech therapy. It was in it until fifth grade. Because he had such clogged ears that we didn't know. But when we started this process of getting it checked, they said, he he understands you and he's talking back to you in the way that he hears you, which is like underwater. He said, it's as if you went to China and we're trying to learn Chinese underwater. So you can't learn a language if you can't hear it clearly. So he is talking the words back to you, but this just sounds, he always to me sounded garbled, like, or like thick in his tongue. And they said, he's just mimicking back what he hears which was super interesting. So it took him, you know, years, the speech therapy to get over it. And then um, he really was in speech therapy probably two years longer than he should have been. He just liked it so much. Oh. Um, he loved speech. So he loved to get out of class and go to speech therapy and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. And then I told you, once he got a palate expander, when he was getting ready for braces, his whole speech changed. Oh, interesting. He so, had more room. Oh, I, and balloons just showed up. Balloons for John's speech. I don't know why, you Your guys. Your kids are so good. I... As someone who has a child that's um, – my youngest is only 
like maybe a year older. Actually, no, based on when everything's filmed, he's maybe only a couple months older than Cruz. Yeah. And this is, it's really hard. Like, you know, there are going to be challenges with children, but it is really hard, especially with your first, especially when they're young and you're like, but everyone's doing these things and yeah. my kid isn't. And it's right. so hard. And we had a speech issue. It was more do, to do with COVID and not being around people. And also the fact mm. that his sisters would narrate life for him. And we finally right. realized we can't narrate like he's the dog. We yeah. have to let him talk. So we did start speech therapy and because he just was not talking. And it really, after a while, it did become kind of expensive babysitting, lovely expensive babysitting. But I looked at her, I said, we, he seems to be okay. And she's like, yeah. yeah, honestly, you can probably, you don't probably need to do the required year. You can probably cut out now. And yeah. I was like, I really like you though. I appreciate the tips, but that's scary. It's scary when your child starts learning something and then you see them regress. And yeah. there are so many, so many reasons that can be, but Cruz is so cute. He's such a cute little guy. He is so cute. I love he is him. So I hope he's, I hope he's doing better and I hope speech therapy has helped and that can cause strain on a marriage, though, if and we're talking we, about Jackson and Brittany. Because Brittany was on Watch What Happens Live last week, and so he could have asked her about this, right? But it was this week. Okay. So um, then we find out since Jackson and Brittany had Cruz, they only have sex like two times a year. And they both say they need to work on their relationship. And she's basically said, you know, to him, like, my mom's in town for a whole month, and when are you going to take me on a date? You said we're going on a date by ourselves. He's like, that's right, because if we're going to have more kids, like, we got to get this. We got to get this on track. She's like, I know, Jax. So back to Cruz. They're um, asking questions about Cruz lining his cars up all in the same direction. And it's interesting. I think that now, now I feel like they're reading too many things. You know what I mean? They're over educating themselves. So now they think everything is a sign of something. Um, my son did this. My son lined up cars and had a race that would be like, it would take like two weeks for the cars to finish the race. So they were just all over the house mm -hmm. and he would have to step around the race. Relatable. Go around the race. And then he would do things like, what car do you think is going to win? I'm like, it's really not fair since it's, you know, who's going to win already. He's like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. You got to tell me who you think. I'm, like, I'm going to pick this red car. He'd be like, mm, bad choice. I, I will say with mm -hmm. marriages though, um, my kind of ground rule I've decided is that until your child is five, unless unless your partner has done something real bad, unforgivable, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. talking about that. But listen, you're sleep deprived. Your kid can't do anything for themselves. Once they are potty trained. Yeah. Like if you still hate each other. Yeah. Then I'm just saying, I, I, I see why people get divorced within the first two or three years after having a child because it yeah. is so – unrelenting. You don't feel like anyone cares about you and yes. your needs. Yeah. It's just like, listen, if you hate your husband or wife right now and you have a one-year-old and nothing else is wrong in your relationship, like, you know, nothing unforgivable or abusive, just give it a little time. Give yeah, it a little time. You get, that resentment will build up if you feel like you're doing more yeah. or you're yeah. not sleeping well. And once the child starts doing things for themselves a little more, they're a little more self-sufficient. We're sleeping through the night. It, things might look a little different. You might hate your your spouse less. You might love your spouse, in fact, yeah. once you get over that hump. You might. It, it is hard, <laughs> though, those first couple of years um, very. with a baby. It's so hard. Very, very. So um, I feel for Jackson and Brittany is what I say here. I feel for them because, of yeah. course, they, you know, Jax may be a narcissist, bad person and all these things, but in, she may be a little insufferable, but they want what's best for their kid. Yes. And, you know, they want him to succeed. And as parents, we can all feel that. And we can all feel that like sitting around, like watching him with the speech. They were like, should we shit here? Should we not? You know, all that. Like, mm -hmm. I got it. I got oh, it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So now we see Jesse and Michelle, two people have never hated anybody more, more than these two people hate each other. Wow. They hate each other. Hate each other. So they're sitting by the pool and Michelle's like, Yes, Kristen sent me this text that says, I want to assure you that your secrets are safe with me and I don't retaliate. So I wish you the best. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes so what's the secret? And she goes, I have no idea what she's talking about. I was like, oh, she yeah, knows. You, oh, oh, yeah, she you do. knows. And she is scared. I mean, why did you bring it up to your husband? Just like poke the bear? I don't know. Um, maybe goes, it has to do with, maybe it has to do with him. And that's her way of saying, oh, I know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know. You know what it is. You yeah. know. Be careful. And she says, um, I, I don't have any idea what Kristen's talking about, but my life is bigger than this. I have a kid. I have a job. And um, then Jesse says, like, he got real turned on by how she got mad and flipped a chair. 
Of Which course is, he does. Yeah, he must love uh, Teresa. He he must like watch that scene from season one as foreplay. Yes. Well, you know, Juicy Joe saw it as foreplay. 19 sure. prostitutes yes. or whatever she said. Prostitute engaged Ma- 19 times. Engaged 19 times. Prostitution whore. Yeah, prostitution whore. So um, now we see Janet and Jason and they're talking about like, what did that mean about the secret and the protecting like what did that mean with michelle so they're like oh i don't know what it was and then we find out all about this charity uh gala that they're going to that they support called be the change this person jared lips is their friend and he had his life saved by um a stem cell treatment so it's all about uh donating stem cells and be the change so she's a part of she's she's, uh, she's part of the organization and then we meet Jared Lips and he says, oh, there's drama about where to sit. Like, Kristen keeps texting me. What were you going to say? Oh, no. I was just thinking kind of like stem cell treatment and stuff. And that's a whole other like kind of like far right conservative argument <laughs> about the use of stem cells. And stuff. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get But so I'm like, Michelle went to that. So I guess she's OK. She's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's sorry. I just I had that like brief thought. and I was like, oh, my God. Everything my husband got so stem, cells, stem cells in his elbow. He's doing great. In his um, elbow. Interesting. His elbow. Imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices. That's right. I'm talking about my favorite. It's Quince. Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. I've told you guys about the Mongolian cashmere sweaters, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops and skirts. Oh, they're so cute. They've got jewelry. They've got travel stuff. They've got baby stuff. They've got home stuff. I can't explain to you guys how much I freaking love Quince. I bought two things this week. I bought a little purse and I bought myself some earrings. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Like I've told you guys, go to the bottom of the item you're looking at. They have that chart that shows you comparable brands and exactly what the price difference is. Because they partner directly with these top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to you. Like I said, I recently just got these earrings that are so cute. They're gold. And I'm thinking about buying my new nephew um, like a little baby sweater. Like so cute. And they also have great suitcases. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash pink shade for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash pink shade to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash pink shade. All right, y'all, it's time to upgrade your uncomfortable shapewear. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Whether you're a bride, a wedding guest, or simply seeking everyday smoothing, Honey Love is the go-to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology, so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. This is true. I took my Honey Love little power shorts with me to L.A., Nobody even knew I was wearing them. They're so comfy. They never roll down, no matter how much you groove on the dance floor or run around L.A. in heels that are uncomfortable. Honey Love Shapewear features lingerie-inspired design details that you want to show off, and they're made with that breathable fabric that keeps you nice and cool. And for a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. You're going to get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link. This superpower short is helping ladies everywhere sculpt and smooth from your stomach to your thigh. They offer just that right amount of compression, but it's not so painful that you're miserable by the end of the night. You hardly know you're wearing it, honestly. Um, there, this one little piece has a little booty lifter. You guys know I need it. Boost bands on the back of the thigh give your bottom just a little bit of bump, a little bit of bump. So Honey Love has more than just sculpt wear, of course. They have incredibly comfortable bras, tanks, and leggings for everyday support. So Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% at honeylove.com slash pink shade. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. That's honeylove.com slash pink shade. And after you purchase, they'll ask you, hey, where'd you hear about us? And please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Shape your life with Honey Love. Yeah. So... Now the dudes are going to take the kids to a festival. We get a lot of scenes of like silly music, like don 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 don, because the guys don't know how to put in the car seats. You guys, you guys have no idea how easy it is to put in car seats compared to in my day. Back in my day, they didn't have the latch system. 
No. Now, well, this car, apparently this minivan doesn't have the latch system. What? This is a, no, you shouldn't get this minivan three under two. No, no, no. You have to have the latch system. You have yeah. to. They yeah. invented that towards the end when John oh. was in a car seat. It just saved my life. Because we were just oh, we like, no. That. Yeah, we're just like, no, the car seat cannot come out of the car. <laughs> if you're taking my child somewhere, you must go in that car because we're that's, not taking that's that how car I seat feel out. Too. That's yeah. how I feel too. We also had the Diono Radian, which is like the real heavy one, but it's like a yes. slim profile. Everyone loves it. It's just, that thing is so damn heavy. I was like, this is staying in my car. It's not moving. The one that we had was the, uh, the Britax. Oh, yep. A, that's a good one too. So freaking heavy. But it was Ugh. like, I remember we like asked for that for like a Christmas present because it was like $600 and we didn't have it. We were like, we need help pay. That's what we want for Christmas for my parents. Yep. Just give us some money towards this car seat that our kids need. Then we had to have two of them. I was like, oh my God. Oh, I'm going to go bankrupt with this shit. <laughs> it's so expensive. Oh. So the, the dudes are taking the kids to a festival. They don't know how to get the car seats in, all that. So it's Danny, the only nice person on this show. And well, I mean, and his wife, Nia, and then uh, Jesse and Jax. So Danny is literally trying to tell them how to be decent husbands. Um, he's Jax, trying. He's trying to help them out. Jax is saying the romantic spark isn't there anymore. And that's not fair because Brittany deserves to have a guy be romantic. But oh, guess who could change that? You could. I know. He kind of acts like he has no role to play yeah. in the demise of their marriage. And it's yeah. like, buddy. Buddy, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's you. It's you. And he knows it's him. And it was always going to be yeah. him. There was, it was so, never He is so slimy. It was never going to go any other way. Never. So it was written in the stars. So um, Danny is like, so do you guys know about the love languages? And they're like, no. <laughs> and he goes, well, see, it's like you could be doing things and you think this is the way you should. But they're not hearing it because that's not. he's trying to explain it to them. They're like, huh, uh. And, and and they're like, yeah, because I'm just telling you, when you get married, you have kids, things change. And Jax goes, I don't want it to change. Like, I used to have sex three times a day. And now it's like, do we have sex this month? Like, I don't want it to change. You probably also could change that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, Also, you know that Danny definitely read all the Into Me See books. No, we know. talked about that. No, I don't know what that is. What Remember is that? Sandoval went to that that cold plunge with Billy Lee called Intimacy? Yes, yes, yes. yes and yes, we yes, talked yes. about intimacy and you're like, I didn't know that. You're, uh, there's like all these books about it. You know Danny has read all those self-help books. He is married to a former Miss USA. Miss he America. is. He yeah. is. He lucked out because he's a little fella. He, and but he's got this gorgeous. Though, you can tell though, he is just so charming and so easy to talk to. Like we'll talk about it later with Kristen, but he's just... Really easy to talk to. I, I love him. I love him. We love you, Danny. So um, he's not listening. So um, <laughs> Kristen and Luke go out to dinner. And Luke says um, everything he has worked for is in Colorado. And they're true and good people there. LA is 90% douchebags. Uh, Kristen says a good thing about Luke. He's 32 and his libido. You know, they can just go all night. And then she says, you know, I'm not worried about the time and the money it takes to raise a kid. Like, it'll probably just all work out. <sighs> yeah. Now, tell, now tell me what you found out about Luke. Okay, so I made the unfortunate decision to deep dive into Luke, especially finding out his age. I said, oh, I didn't realize he's a younger man. Mm -hmm. um, I decided I needed to know everything. And unfortunately, this man, <laughs> this man has too much out there. You, you need okay. to, you're going to be on reality TV. You button that up. I don't need to know about your your 2007 cruise with all of your siblings. That was just okay. Okay. Well, that's Okay. That's interesting because he has been on Kristen's podcast for, I mean, for ever since Scandaval, you know, Kristen started I, this podcast and he's on it constantly. I, I don't listen to that. Oh, okay. um, well, I but, did during Scandaval. I listened to everything. So my understanding is like, I understand where the land is, which makes sense. It would be more in the mountains because where are you going to get that many, that much acreage? But he was yeah. probably more in like the Colorado Springs area in terms of his home, which is like an hour and a half ish from Denver. Don't quote me on that. Um, but that's I where like you, the Air Force, when I talked Air to Force her, she, Academy is. Yeah. When, when I talked to her, she told me it was like central Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Which makes sense um, with the county that I think it's in. But like, no, he's originally from, I think it's Indiana. His dad is a doctor. I mean, but here's the thing. His Facebook, like, I don't, I don't understand the, the attraction to this man. I really don't. He has like, his likes are, are everything you think they're going to be. It's like ax throwing, mm -hmm. um, wilderness stuff, like very independent, 
spirit American, um, the <laughs> under books, under books. My favorite thing is under books. His favorite book is just a page called I hate books. Oh, okay. And it's like, I, I am learning everything I need to know, but I think he graduated high school in like 2009 or 2010. And that is just, that is just too soon. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, she's 40 and he's 32. So yeah. I mean, it's a difference, but it's not like he went huge. to Ball State. He was selling uh, land in Indianapolis because he set up a different page for that in 2021. So I don't know if he was going back and forth, if he was there for COVID and then was like, I'm going to go back to Colorado. But yeah, it could be. He just became so much less appealing the more I saw of him on social media and realized how young he was in, say, 2012 when Kristen is screaming at people on Vanderpump rules. Right, 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 right. Well, I get, mm. well, listen, there's a lid for every pot and um, maybe they're a perfect match like shorts and Joe. I, I will bite my tongue. Okay. So for some reason, Brittany and Danny are going to set up a romantic evening for Kristen and Luke because she's ovulating. And, <laughs> Brittany says the word, if it's so romantic, did Jackson do anything romantic for me? I mean, this is so romantic. Danny, this is romance. I need romance. This is romantic. Like, we got it. Oh, my God. She has really become a caricature of herself. You couldn't yes. parody Brittany because yes. she is the parody of Brittany. And then the poor thing with the, the facial surgery or whatever, not healing in time. So she's also perpetually frowning. Just talking like this without her bottom lip doesn't oh move at all. Oh, my God. And I everything. Can't even do it. The boobs that Jax forced her to get look I so painful. painful. I just, I hate all of this for her. I do too. I do too. Remember when she was just a young thing that came just from so Hooters? Just cute. Yeah, yeah, just from Hooters came out with JX. JX. Yeah. Um, ah, oh, Brittany. Just met him at a pool party in Vegas. Like, that's not the start of your love story. Uh, I mean, she should have known better. And in some ways, her covering for Jax is just as bad. You know what I mean? She does know better. She's been with this man for a long time. She does know better. She's made her bed. But I still feel very, very bad just watching it. Like, she's excited that they have rose petals and some of those electric dollar store candles. Very excited about that. Like, this is romance. Now, why did they get the massage table out? I was like, is somebody getting a massage? Are they just boning like what's what going was on the, was, was the dog's name jill oh yeah the one dog's name is jill i don't know yeah. why that made me laugh but yeah. a german shepherd named jill just really made me laugh and jill's all in the way i was like trying to, the, to do this the story behind that name yeah because they've got the two little dogs as well um i can't remember um okay so they've set up the, okay just romantic it's so romantic so um, now Jackson, Brittany, and Janet and Jason are headed to the gala, and they're talking about the budget in the car. And she and Janet and Jason are like, what's it? He goes, I don't know. Like if you're going to bid on something like twenty five hundred, and Jackson, we should talk about this. We should actually really talk about this because like we've got we've got the speech therapist, we've got bills to pay. And she goes, my money's my money, Jax. I'll buy what I want. He goes, you just bought two new handbags. Can the budget be two thousand? Can the budget be two thousand? Like, this is this is kind of relatable. I'm it not, is relatable, I'm especially because the other couple said twenty five hundred, and then she's like, "I will do twenty five hundred too." He's like, he's "No, a liar. no." He's, a he's liar. like, he's like, "Listen, insurance is not covering speech therapy. We've maxed out the HSA. Yeah, we we, we can't be doing this. Yeah, we can't." He's like that again. I felt that, but he's like, he's a lawyer. I'm doing cameos. Like, just come on now. So, um. They play some hilarious music while the guys are talking about their outfits. And it's like, dun, 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 more clown music. And then Jesse arrives. And what the actual fuck? He was like, no, this is a real dinner jacket. I was like, what? What abstract painting jacket is this? What was you know, this? This is some sort of high end. Um, I'm going to see if anyone's ID'd it because you know it's something like it's designer, but it's it Versace looked, or something. But it, it was so it ugly. Looked, it looked atrocious. Atrocious. You know what it looked like? I don't know if you ever watched Real Housewives of Potomac, but Chris Bassett, my um, former friend that I used to work with, uh, he always got these crazy tux outfits. And you're like, that is not cute, sir. Not cute. No, it's not cute at all. Yeah, I'm not trying to cute. find out his dinner because, you know, he's like, it's Galliano. Like, it's something. Something. Crazy. The two of them, especially at the end when they're walking around, you're like, these are beautiful people. It's too bad they're not going to be able to make it work. Because they are both gorge. Mm-hmm. So um, 
even though they started him off episode one showing that he's just a functioning alcoholic. They showed that episode uh, one. Yeah, I don't even know if he's functioning. Well, I was being generous. So um, – <laughs> Luke doesn't come because Jill is super sick. It's diarrhea. We've got a lot to talk about. Jill? Did you just say Jill? Jill. Oh, no, Jill the dog. No, Jill, Jill. the dog is sick. You're right. Did Jill you the dog is got, sick. Did she get chicken skewers? skewers? I think was she, she, pro- was I she, think she probably ate those rose petals, probably. They oh put my rose God. petals everywhere. Probably. Or she ate one of those plastic candles and got a piece lodged. All that shit is dangerous for dogs. Uh, yeah, if you have a chewing, chewing dogs. Um Jill's, now, people have commented on the fact that Kristen wears Birkenstocks wherever she goes. She is wearing Birkenstocks with her evening gown, and she's just got the um, the carpal tunnel wrist brace. I mean, she is such a middle aged lady. She's very Colorado. Wearing wearing Birkenstocks everywhere is pretty Colorado, and that's fine because you know I love my Birkenstocks. But I think that she has said somewhere that she has some sort of a foot injury. So again, I think that between that and then Brittany's chin, I think they told them like, we're picking up cameras next week and nobody was ready because that's another reason Nia, you think Nia wanted to start filming with uh, three week old twins? No, I cannot. uh, What she's doing is the most miserable thing because you really are about to just lose your shit on people all the time because you are so hormonal and she has two Two. and an 18 month old. Three and two, I would be losing my mind. But actually, I'm here to tell you because I also do not like uncomfortable footwear. I I am putting my foot down, pun intended. Ugg just came out this season with a platform mm-hmm. that's super cute. It's black. It's got like a little little. It's a it's a wedge. Mm-hmm. It's got like the nice memory foam. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get on. It's a little velcro on the back. It is you're stable, and they are so comfortable. And they okay. are a wedge sandal. They are so cute. And no one needs to know you're wearing Uggs. Okay. Well, I got you, know, I you lo- Kristen. I got listen, you. I, I love my aerosols, but she is at a black tie event. She really doesn't give. She's fuck. at a black tie event. She could have tried She's to like, find. I got a bunion. I can't do this. I mean, even at least like a like a gold ballet flat or something, you That's know? That's true. We, I mean, even even Birkenstocks and Uggs have started making like some cuter footwear. Yeah. There, was, there had to have been something else. Get Get some Rothy's on. I mean, in, there there would have been some other choices. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, Jill is sick. Okay. So Zach is sitting with Michelle at that table, and he he's like, you know, if I didn't get a chance, I just want to tell you, I apologize for all the you know my role and all of this, and I really am hoping that um, you and Jesse and Kristen can talk later. And then we find out that the romantic evening worked because Kristen and Luke did bang, and she laid around for a long time, and. Was it Nia that was like, you don't put your legs up? I didn't, flat. Wh- why don't you put them up? I thought I you put them up. That's what I thought too. I thought you were supposed to tilt your pelvis so tilt that pelvis up. they know where to go into yes. your brain. Yeah, right up to your <laughs> brain. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't realize there, there was – but listen, I have not been pregnant, thankfully, for quite some time. Yeah, so not as long as me. Not as long as me. That's fair. The last yeah. time I was pregnant was, yeah, four years ago. Yeah. I got Ugh. 18. I got 18. Um, she laid around for a long time. Jack's like, so you think you're knocked up? She goes, I don't know. Could be. Could be. So um, now we find out about Michelle and Jesse's terrible, sad, horrible love story where she said, I knew he wasn't the guy for me, so I canceled my date with him. But then I got a horny and invited him over, and it's been the world's longest booty call. Oh, my God. Do you think she's like – she like looks and she's like the road less traveled? Yeah. (laughs) Jack Kerouac, she's like, I could have. Yeah, I could have taken a different path. I was so close, but then I got drunk with my girlfriends. I was horny, and I yeah. texted the guy that I really wasn't interested in. But here's the question: Are, Is she indicating that they got pregnant at this booty call? I. That's a good question. I didn't take it as that. I took it more as like you know, I didn't want to go on the date, but then we slept together, and I was kind of like, okay, I'm kind of interested, and yeah, we just never stopped seeing each other, despite the fact that I didn't want to trust your gut. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if she was indicating that they got pregnant on that hookup. And then she was like, oh, God, now I guess I have to date this guy. I don't um, think so. So Kristen says to Michelle, um, I want to apologize to you because I know words can hurt and I should not have repeated you know, what was said. And then Jesse storms off. He gets mad because Kristen is saying that she repeated something. He Jesse feels like she's not taking ownership. But she did just repeat something, and she's saying, I'm taking ownership that I repeated it, and I'm sorry. 
Um, and she's like, I had to go to therapy twice this week. And so Jesse storms off inside because he's probably got the DTs. And Kristen says, um, I am re-apologizing to you. And I want you to know that I really mean it. And Michelle says, mm, I believe you. I believe you need some help. And Kristen's like, I've gone to therapy for nine years. I, I know. I know I need help. And they're talking to him. Michelle goes, I can coexist with Kristen, but I don't trust her at all. But we can coexist. And then Jesse comes out and says, I got to ask you something, Kristen. Is it worth it to do all this same shit over and over and over again? And she goes, what shit? And he goes, get involved and make comments and be in the middle. Like, I'm super stressed out about it. I have to imagine you're super stressed out about it. And I do apologize for the hurtful things I said to you and to Luke, but just don't get in the middle of things and we're going to be fine. Yeah. It was kind of interesting to watch because on the one hand, Kristen's like, well, this is how you do reality TV. But it's also so weird to walk yourself right into, like she set her own trap for herself for people to bring up the racism charges against her. Right. She laid the trap for herself, which is yeah. so weird to me. But I will say in Kristen's defense, I don't love it when people call her crazy Kristen. It yeah. just feels like we shouldn't be doing that anymore. And yeah. also it's really weird to like fight a harmful label with a harmful label. You know what I mean? Cause it's not, it's not like you, you're, you're prioritizing or caring about her mental health. You're actually like, kind of, she said like, more than once, like, I'm not going to retaliate for my own mental health. I'm not going to say what really happened. I'm going to protect Michelle for my own mental health. Now putting that out there, she's stirring that pot to be like, what are we protecting Michelle about? Which I guess oh, yeah. No, find I know. Out. Kristen, yeah. Listen, Kristen is definitely doing some shiz. Uh, I'm not doubting that. But I just I didn't like when Janet uh, was like, oh, I, the crazy Kristen's back. And it's like, oh, we're, we're you know who was on Kristen's anymore. podcast all the time? Janet. Mm. That's how I've heard of Janet because she was on Kristen's podcast. I don't know. All I still have, I still haven't. I'm not off the Janet train yet. I need to know her star sign, though. OK, well, you look that up. Listen, there are very important things to to find out about people. Um, okay. So da, 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 don't get in the middle. Okay. And the talking head, Jesse says, just like Michelle says, I'm an adult with a wife and a kid and a career and a million other problems. So we could just move on. But I mean, that's the same thing Michelle said. Like I have a full life with a kid and a job and a husband. Like I don't need to worry about this. I, I love like, when people do that. Yeah. I love when people do that. It's like, it's not about if you have time to deal with this or not. It's it's just about that it's a thing. You know, it's not like you have to justify and also, your schedule. You don't have to like justify how busy you are if you have a, a spouse or a kid or six kids or five or one or two jobs. You don't have to justify it. Just be like, this is a bullshit. Don't be saying I'm a racist, you know? And I think That's it's it. also a way of saying Kristen is unmarried. She doesn't have a kid, so she has all the time to stir the pot. And I have What's no her job? Time. I yeah. have no time to gossip. You all have time to go- you have time to gossip. I have three children. I have time to gossip. <laughs> Me too. Get out of here. I got I got a uh, senior assassin going on in my front yard. Got, I got all got, the time to gossip. You got mother flock in trouble <laughs> up in your house. <laughs> and we bring it all around. Um the guy did that an yeah, hour and ten minutes later. Yes. Um Zach says, um, yeah, to Christine. He goes, I think I think it went well. We should head home. Let me let me go get your car or whatever. And then Jesse and Michelle head to the bar. And this is that the shot of them walking to the bar, even though he's got on that ridiculous jacket. I was like, these are beautiful people. And it's gonna be too bad when they break up later in the season. Yeah, they are. And the the kid is very funny. Like she's a very, oh. very wordy three year old and very well, funny. When that when that scene last week with him saying fuck and then her going, God, Jesse, you shouldn't say that. Da, da, da. And then later on, she goes, I don't give a fuck. And the kid's like, and then he was like, oh, mommy said it. I was like, that's good. No, that's the kid good. is good because I, yeah. I forget what he said. He's like, oh, there, there was a sign that we just passed about you putting on your shoes and socks. And she she's like, I didn't see a sign. I'm like, oh, God, that kid has good timing. But by the way, I never tried that in the car to be like, oh, I just passed a road sign that said something. I literally, I, I've never thought about, I literally kind of took a, a mental note. I was like, that's a good trick. damn it, Jesse, like, Jesse, that's not bad. It's a pretty good trick. So, until she can learn to read, she's going to be like, there's no signs on the road that say anything about shoes. What the hell is he talking about? That one says stop. That one says yield. That one says Santa Monica Boulevard. What? It was good. I'm not going to lie. Ah, uh, do you have any final thoughts? Did you find out who makes that terrible jacket? I I haven't been able to ID it yet, but I'm definitely going to work on it because you know it's like, well, this is a proper dinner jacket. It was, um, you know, whatever. Something. I feel like it's some. 
Did you Google lens it? Google lens it. Oh, I didn't Google lens it. How do you hold on? I gotta I got to do the Google lens. Google lens. You gotta What's happening next week on the valley? What do we have coming next week? I don't know. I didn't write anything down. Okay, well, see, I was trying to vamp. I was trying to vamp a little bit. You see how I did that? I was like, let me vamp a little bit here. Uh, let me think. I can't even remember what it did because I was taking notes on that, and then I wanted to try to just sort of quickly rewatch Vanderpump to make sure I uh, had things down for whenever you said it. Um, so look at me. Oh, We're killing God. it, and we still have to talk to each other later this week. Sign up for her Patreon. We have fun there. You guys, um, Pink Shade Prime is on Patreon and Supercast, and we will be talking this Friday, Meredith and I, about Seeking Sister Wife. It was a banner episode of Seeking Sister Wife. And, oh, uh, God. Well, it's also really good because I've started re- – as people in the in Hey Bunky on Facebook now, I've started re-watching from the beginning because I'd never seen it. And I am just now where with, – with, uh, I almost called them Derek – but I meant Garrick and Danielle mm. with two ends. Mm-hmm. I am I am with um with uh small wife, you know, oh, with, uh-huh. with Roberta still. And it's yeah, okay. so fascinating to watch that and kind mm. of know like what was going on then in their headspace and then look at not Roberta now and yeah. understand. Like, oh man, it just oh, I have so many thoughts about season three of Seeking Sister Wife. I and then we there. see on Seeking Sister Wife next week, it looks like he's already bringing in another girl. That was a twist. I was not ready and That's for- what he did to Roberta. You'll see. This is what he does to Roberta. <gasps> and Roberta gets so mad because he has a date with somebody else. He can't do he, – he can't just court one sister at a time. He's got to got two going. And then somebody told me that it was just like well-documented. Danielle had a baby. I was like, what? What? This time I said, oh, yeah, she had a baby girl in September. I was like, say, huh? Whoa. Huh? Whoa. Because, oh, yeah, they tell us that they are done in season two with having kids. So, no. uh, listen, I just want to know, did God talk to him and give him a very quick timeline of how, how when he needs to get five wives? Because, you know, they're, they're also having issues in the uh, the other family, the Davis family, about mm. bring, introducing mm. another sister wife. But at least they've been married for like a year or a year and a half. This is, I mean, he's not even married to other Roberta. Other Roberta has got a K-1 visa path, a two-year path ahead. Yeah. And I'm also, like, I hope what? he realizes once he does that K-1 visa and marries her to keep her in the country, that's it for the Brazilian woman. Oh, yeah. No, he can't go back. He can't go back. But you know what? Maybe that's okay because it seems like they they never take the time to really learn Portuguese anyway. But what I'm saying is if he does the K-1 visa and the woman comes – Okay, now he's one K one visa down. You can only do it twice. Oh, that's that's okay. But I wonder with that girl that's coming over. I wonder if she has like other connections. Like I wonder if she's in the pro. Like who knows if she's in the process of just trying to get a work visa in America or so. I don't know. Like I feel like that situation might be a little different. But it, it could be. She's a I, law student, so she might. You know, I was not ready for that plot twist though. I know. I was. I was. Wait. Oh, he's so gross. Got to make more of those tacky necklaces. <sighs> I can't wait to talk about it. Okay. We, we sorry, digress. Sorry. We sorry. Digress. We have, again, you have to listen to Hey Bunky. We have fun there. Yeah. That's what happens over on- And, and 90 Day, uh, The Single Life Tell All, part, part 3045. Part four of five. Thank God it's almost over. And then we'll be rolling into um, Caribbean, Caribbean Love. I'm so excited. Caribbean Love is going to be good. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be good. And for those of you asking if I'm going to cover MILF Manor, of course I fucking am. I'm going to be covering MILF Manor on the $10 level with Deanna Chang. So that's going to be incredible. And Meredith and I will continue over in Hey Bunky. And then um, when love after lockup, it'll be love during lockup, comes back in two weeks. I'll be covering that with Keisha on the free feed, just like always. Love it. It's been a long, long drought. And everybody is wanting Keisha to come back. I'm, you guys, well, obviously, I'm not, I'm not keeping her from you. I, mean, I promise. I she's promise. not locked. She's not locked in the Hey Bunky, uh, no. you know, cell that I, no. I was just let out of. <laughs> she's and, not. And now, and now Perry, Mary Payne's going to just leave me back with little treats. She's just going to drop along the way to tr- trick me into going back into my cell. Oh my God, you guys! And also in August is going to be Love Is Blind UK. <gasps> August. Oh, there's so many good things coming. I mean, let me tell you what else is coming. That yeah, so Keisha, I'm, Keisha I and I will cover that. that. Keisha and I will cover that. Oh, and then so uh, Milf Manor, I just mentioned, and Love Is Blind UK. What else is coming? Something else is coming. Oh, I think I think I'm thinking of um, Jersey. Jersey starting soon. Jersey's like May fifth. Joe, Joe. 
I can't wait. I need to tell you what Teresa said. I know. I can't wait. That's a really oh, good marker. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm from I'm from Jersey, but not that part of Jersey. Yeah. You're from all over the place. I can't even you. <laughs> I'm here, there, and everywhere. All right. I gotta go take a casserole to a tennis team dinner. So Oh my God, that is the that's the most <laughs> southern thing I've ever heard you say. I gotta go take the baked ZD to the tennis team dinner. It was for my son's tennis team, not my own. And Okay, well, I hope he doesn't get assassinated. He's panicked because it's in like a park. You know, and he was like, what are they doing to us? We're just putting us out there like targets in a park? I would have to up my anxiety medication, like double it if I was a part of this. It's way too stressful. I can't live my life like this. And it's not a goggle day, so he can't just walk around <gasps> in his goggles or he would. Oh, no. And he's been taunting people. Oh, yeah. So, like, I really think he's asking for it. I'm sorry. I he's going to have gonna... to climb a tree and hide. Well, the whole thing is he's always looking around him because he's got his guns. Because if he gets that guy out, then he's good for another week. I'm going to tell you the, the <laughs> amount of discussion we've had about this. I can't even tell you. All right, I'll keep you guys updated. If you oh, want to know if go. he gets out, if he wants to, if you want to know if he gets out, listen I, to I would that. like to know. I would like the first text when it happened so I can send my condolences and maybe a casserole. I would appreciate that. Don't do baked ziti because that's what I just made. Okay. All right, everybody, make sure you follow Meredith at Meredith Constant on TikTok and Instagram. And that's where you can find out about her um, journalism on the TMZ TV that'll be coming up. <laughs> <laughs> my hard hitting yeah. journalism. That's right. Talk about Isla Fisher. Yeah. Yeah, That's sure. Why not? Isla Fisher. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Sasha I, Baron I, Cohen. I wrote it phonetically just in case because I didn't want to say Isla or something. And yeah. Isla, yeah. or I didn't want to embarrass myself on TMZ. Yeah. You guys, she's that funny redheaded girl that was in Wedding Crashers. Yes. And, um, Follow Meredith there for all her content. She also does a lot of royal stuff, so that's interesting. And please, as always, begging you to follow me over on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com.